most out of Bollinger Bands. Now, Bollinger Bands were created by money manager and researcher John Bollinger. And John Bollinger is still very alive, very active in the financial markets, and especially with his Bollinger Bands. And one of the nicest things about using this indicator is you can actually go to Bollinger's site and learn about everything firsthand. And you can access the site by just going to www.bollingerbands.com and you can get everything right from the horse's mouth. Now, there has been an abundance of information published on how to trade with Bollinger Bands, but much of it is discretionary in theory. You know, there's all kinds of gurus out there giving you their own little tweak on everything. But the how to use Bollinger Bands information usually pushes it back to the trader to interpret what a securities price is doing relevant to the bands. Now, Bollinger Bands consists of three simple lines. We start out with what's called the moving average line. And from there, we have the upper band and the lower band, which are based on what is called standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is a very complex mathematical formula, which you don't have to learn. Fortunately, Bollinger Bands is so popular, it's automatically, it can be, almost every chart system will automatically apply it. Now, Bollinger Bands can be applied in all financial markets, including equities, forex, commodities and futures. Bollinger Bands can also be used in most time frames from very short periods to hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly. And this is a great thing because most traders don't realize that a lot of the indicators you're using in the marketplace only work well in certain time frames. A lot of them are around for a long period of time and very popular, but they don't work good for day traders because they don't work very good in 15 or 20 minute charting because they give you too many false signals. Okay. There's some that don't work good in daily charting because they're used, they, they work better in smaller time frames. Understanding what time frames your indicator that you're using works in is very important. And Bollinger Band works in all time frames. And Bollinger Bands answers one important question Are prices high or low on a relative basis? Now, as I said before, there's all kinds of discretionary information. You'll have gurus out there telling you when this happens, it is happens in a band buy. And when this happens and this happens, sell. And we're going to look at a few of those towards the end of the class. But really, based on what John Bollinger's developed was our prices are high near the upper band and prices are low near the lower band. Now, that bit of information is incredibly valuable. It's even more powerful if combined with other tools, such as other indicators for confirmation. Now, Bollinger Bands are a technical analysis tool. Specifically, they are a type of a trading band or an envelope. Bands are used the, through as, because they have a, they measure a central tenacity based on a base of some sort. And in this case, the base of the, that we're using for the central tendency is a moving average. So the first thing we do with Bollinger Bands is we come up with a moving average and then we apply what's called standard deviation and it's two times standard deviation. And standard deviation is very complex. In the real world, no statistician would ever calculate standard deviation by hand. The calculations are involved and somewhat complex and risk of making mistakes are high. Also, calculating by hand is slow. So standard deviation, and we're only going to go over this once. You don't ever even have to grasp it all. But I want you to understand this because we want. I want you to understand where these lines come from that are placed in your chart. But we're going to go over a second and place them on a chart. But you have to understand where they came from so that you will understand when you see them act or react what is causing this action? Now, standard deviation is a measure of a dispersion of a set of data from its mean. So a dispersion means a set of, you know, away from its 
you know, how it's dispersed. And the mean is basically an average or a moving average. It is calculated as the square root of variance by determining the variation between each data point relative to the mean. If the data points are further from the mean, there is a higher standard deviation within that data set. Standard deviation is, cal is calculated based on the average. The distance of each data point from the mean is squared, summed, and averaged. Well, that's a real mouthful. And I don't think any of us could do that by hand. I don't even think any of us or all of us could even actually understand it. But, but variance is derived by taking the mean of the data points, subtracting the mean from each data point, individually squaring each of these results, and then taking another means of that these squared. So what it comes down to is standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Okay, if you understand that, you're a better person than I am. All I know is it takes all the data sets in the moving average and figures out how close and relative where they are and comes up with a, a deviation. Okay. So the Bollinger Band then has three pieces or three, three lines. The baseline, which is in the middle, is a 20 period moving average. Then we have the upper band, which is spread above the moving average by a volatility measure known as standard deviation. And in this case, and for standard Bollinger Bands, we use a set of two standard deviations. And the lower band is the exact opposite. It is below the moving average, and it is two standard deviations. So let's go over to a live chart, and let's see if we can put all these mouthful of words in something that makes sense to us. So let me pop up a chart on your screen. Okay, so now we see in front of us a simple one hour chart for the Euro US dollar. It's a current chart. And all we have to do is go up here to indicators and drop it down and locate Bollinger Bands and click on them and it's gonna put it on our chart. Okay, but I already did this ahead of class because I'm kind of prepared. So the first thing we need to know is it drops on a line which I had just put on here on a red line, which is the moving average line. Simple, the standard moving average, 20 period moving average. This is the first line of our Bollinger Bands. Okay, so what do we see? This is the mean, this is the moving average, it's the center line. Then we have to place an upper band and a lower band, which is the calculations of two standard deviations above and below the red moving average line. And now what we have is we have our Bollinger Band. So as you can see, our inputs are based on a 20 period moving average. Let me just highlight this for you. And a two standard deviation using the close of each of those time frames. Now we're looking at a one hour chart. So that used 21 hour candles to calculate the moving average. Okay. So now we have the squiggly thing on our chart. Now the fact is I set it with the red band and I set it with the blue band. You can use any color combination you please. It's totally irrelevant. So you decide what colors you want on your chart. I use thick blue bands and thick red bands only because they're easier for you to see in class. That's it, decide what you wanna use, set up your colors yourself, or use the standard default ones that come up with the indicator. Now, we can notice right here that we see this band. Now tonight, this band looks like maybe a squiggly worm, but the shape of the band has very little to do with anything. Now the width of the band, which is called the bandwidth, is somewhat important. The closer the bands are to one another, 
the less volatility is in the market. The wider the bands, the more volatile the markets are. So that is the basic explanation of the width of the bands. Volatility causes them to get wider and less volatility, the narrower they become. And the moving average is simply a moving average. But together, we have what is called Bollinger Band. And it's pretty easy from here. We got it on a chart. That wasn't a difficult process. Now, learning what it's trying to tell us, that's a completely different story. Now, I'm just going to pop up two other assets. And you can see that the shape of the bands doesn't mean that much. Here's crude oil. And you can see the bands here and most of this point have been almost relatively the same width because the markets, even though they go up and down, haven't been volatile. So remember, the width of the bands isn't telling you whether the price is going up or down. It's telling you how volatile the markets are. Here we can see with gold, again, from this point here forward, the bands have been almost the same width, but look at how that steady downtrend we've had. Because okay. again, it's not about uptrends and downtrends. The width of the band is about volatility. Now, we want to understand what we're looking at when price is what we call riding that band or trying to break out of the band or what price is doing in relationship to the moving average and the upper or the lower band. Because it said everything you need to know about trading an asset and its price is contained within those bands. So let's go over and try to figure out what we can do with these bands. So let me take you back to the PowerPoint. And let's start talking, it's making this into some sense for all of us. Now, because you can't learn all this in one session, and I can't remember to say everything to you, I've put together a handout for you. And it's right there. If you look at it on your screen, you see the what's and how's of Bollinger Bands handout. The only way to get this handout is to download it now. So make sure you click on whatever your system is offering you to download it and save it. There's nobody you can email for it. There's nobody you can call on the phone for it. It's only available during class. So make sure you get it now. Okay. So when you come to a recorded version of this class, you can't download it. When you go see it on investing.com, can't download it. So you must take it now. Okay. Now, it's going to go over in greater detail and I've given you all the charts I can, all the explanation, and it'll go over how to use Bollinger Bands and everything we've been talking about. Now, there are three primary ways that we can use Bollinger Bands. Number one, we have pattern recognition within the bands. We also can see or use the bands to identify early warnings of reversal signals and we can use it for trend analysis because we can use it to detect continuations or the possible end of a current trend. So one of the easiest ways to use Bollinger Bands is in pattern recognition. Now, there's not that many patterns that come about in Bollinger Bands. Okay, And the primary one is the M and the W. Now, these don't happen very quickly because it takes a lot of time. It's like watching a head and shoulders. If you ever watch head and shoulders, develop, it has to develop several different legs. So you, don't, you won't even notice it when it starts developing, and you probably won't even see it till it's in its third leg. So we have the, the W shape, which consists of two bottoms, and then moving into a third top. So what we see is we will notice it when it completes the second bottom. And we refer to this as the N formation. 
because when it forms the end, whether it's a right side up end or an upside down end, depending on whether we're forming an M or a W, so if it's making two tops, okay, then it would be the exact reverse. And we'll look at it in the chart in a second. We won't even notice it until it forms the third, finishes the formation of the third leg or finishes or gives you the end formation. Okay. Once we get the end formation, we would then look at it to start moving into that W. So we can have bullish bottoms or bearish tops. So a bullish bottom pattern is formed by two successive bottoms in price action, which typically resemble a W, as we see here on this chart. Although at first it will resemble an upside down N, the key lies in establishing bullish positions near the lower Bollinger Band with a target set for the upper Bollinger Band. So in other words, we would look to establish bullish positions here and project it to go here. Now, one of the best strategies to use is we won't know that this is completed the end until we get that bottom. And we're not sure that what's happening here until it bounces off there. I look for the break above the moving average line to open a buy position. And I would use that buy position to ride out to the width of the top of the band. Now we have just the opposite of that. Here, where we had the M formation. First, we see the right side up N which is the first top, we won't even notice anything here. Then we come down and form a bottom and we come back and form that second top, which is fairly equal to the first top. And at this point, when it bounces off here, we look for it to form the final leg of the M. When it breaks this moving average line, this is a go short signal that you should be trading that asset to go down and ride it down towards the bottom of the width of the band. So a bearish top pattern is formed by two successive tops in price, which is the opposite of the W and form an M. Before forming the M, an N will emerge in the price action. And this is the point at which traders should want to get involved. Now we highly recommend combining the Bollinger Bands with the RSI indicator as it's a perfect match. There are two types of tops that we looked at. Okay. So one of the tops occurs after a trend move where price fails to reach the outer band as the uptrend becomes weaker. This signal is usually accompanied by an RSI divergence. And then we also get, during consolidation, price, price spikes to the outer Bollinger Band, which gets rejected and a reversal signal into a short action. So in other words, we have top patterns where it pushes up and is not able to reach the band. And price patterns, when it pushes up and rides that band, and then bounces off of it, tries again unsuccessfully, and then falls downward. Okay. These are the two different types of tops or top patterns. You also have, for whatever we have going one direction, remember, you always have the opposite coming from uptrends or downtrends. So in this case, we notice the price was moving up. It hit that top and was rejected but came down to that moving average and was not able to fall below that moving average and then bounced back up to that top and continued into a very strong uptrend. So this is one type of clue. And this is one of the reasons we look for that moving average. Okay, when it's not able to break below that moving average, okay, it still remains with that momentum that it had in that specific direction. When 
price is riding up that band and it pushes up and tries to reach that upper band and is unable to falter and it falls back down. <clears throat> okay. Again, we're not sure what's going to happen. Once it breaks that moving average, then we know that that trend has now ended and is moving in the other direction. But it's a matter of when these bands are trying, when the price is trying to reach the bands and is unable to do that. Okay. We have two different choices of, or two different possible scenarios. I'm just trying to get my marker off here. So, one is after a trend move, price fails to reach the outer band as the uptrend becomes weaker. This signal is usually accompanied by an RSI divergence, but is a continuation signal. During a consolidation, price spikes into the outer band. So remember, we looked at price spiking into the outer band but gets rejected. That's a reversal signal. Now, if you combine that with other indicators, you'll be much better off. While Bollinger Bands are exceptionally helpful in determining when an asset has overshot to the upside or downside, it's important to use the bands to also set risk conditions, just not entry points. In contrast to other indicators, Bollinger Bands are non-static indicators and in that they change their shape based on recent price action and accurately measure momentum and volatility. Thus, we can use Bollinger Bands to analyze the strength of trends and get a lot more out of the important information display. So overall, during strong uptrends or strong trends, we expect price to remain near the upper or the lower band. In an uptrend, we expect price to hug that upper band. In a downtrend, we expect price to hug the lower band. If price pulls away from the outer band as the trend continues, it shows fading momentum. So in other words, as price continues to move up and the band still moves up, but it, it moves away from how close to that upper band it was, it's telling us that momentum is fading. Then repeated pushes into the outer band that don't actually reach the band show a total lack of power. A break of the moving average is often the signal that the trend is ending. So on here, we can tell a whole story of how price action has moved along in this entire trading scenario or price action. The fact is we can only make profit from the wall forward. So looking all the way back here, it doesn't tell you that much, but it sure will help you learn how to read these because we want to understand what to do here. So at this point here, we should have been entering a short position and riding it down the lower band. Once that price broke here and broke that upper band, we would definitely be closing our position. Now, moving forward, we might want to watch this a little bit longer because it might also, if we weren't in the market, be giving us an entry point to enter the market. So let's talk about what these five, let's tell, see if we can tell this whole story about Bollinger Bands. So we see price moving up steadily, but it's unable to get near the outer band at all, and it breaks below the moving average and starts moving into a very strong downtrend. Here, it tries to push to the outer band, but it's rejected immediately and bounces off. Okay. We're not sure what it's gonna do at this point, but again, when we see it break that moving average, we now know what it's gonna do. It could have hit that moving average and moved back down along that the lower Bollinger Band and continued its downward trend. So the moving average is the clue to exactly what's happening. Now, in this case, we bounced above. We came up here, we saw price 
reach the outer band, but immediately get rejected. Now, this also helps if you're using bullish and bearish signals with candlesticks, especially if you're using bullish and bearish engulfing patterns. It will help you interpret the band. But you see, at this point, we saw the price get rejected. We know the trend is losing its momentum. And we see price break down below the moving average, but it doesn't stay down there very long. And price moves back up again and tries, but it cannot reach that outer band. It then goes below the moving average and then moves into a hardcore downtrend, riding that band all the way down here until we get a bearish signal and price moves sideways or consolidate, but moves above the moving average. Okay, now we get a whole bunch of weird stuff right here. But you see how it broke out of the band? It still wasn't able to stay. The bears took over the market, breaks that moving average. And once again, we could have entered a short position. So remember, the first step, we saw prices in a strong downtrend and price stays close to the outer band all the time, which is a very bearish signal. Okay, Riding down here with, with my white arrow where number one is. Then price fails to reach the outer band and then shot up very strongly, even showing an engulfing pattern. This is a classic reversal pattern where the bearish trend strength faded. So, what we have, see, we have the bearish engulfing pattern, which is we have a bearish candle, and then we have the bullish candle that fully engulfed the previous candle. Price started bouncing back up and ended this bearish trend and then broke the moving average here. Three, we have three swing highs with lower highs each time the price moved to a high but made lower highs each time. The first swing high reached the outer band, whereas the following two failed. So it showed fading strength in the band. Okay. This is number three, pushed up to the band, fell off, pushed up again, fell off, pushed back up again and fell off, totally showing total loss of momentum to the upside. Then we go to a strong downturn where price stayed near the outer band and it tried to pull away, but the bears were always in control. They never lost control of this entire ride down here at three, at four. And then finally price consolidates and moves sideways, not reaching the outer band anymore. And the rejection pin bar ended the downtrend. So in other words, we had the pin bar here for the band right here, pushing through the lower band and getting rejected and moving back up, completely ending that downtrend. And now it's either gonna stay in a sideways consolidation and or move forward into an uptrend. And this is a point where it might give us an opportunity to enter the markets. Now, that was a rather simplistic, but a beginner's interpretation. Now, soon after, Bollinger put together all of his Bollinger bands. Traders wanted to, or started to believe that the bandwidth would tell us a story. So John Bollinger created what's called percent B, which is a different indicator. It works with Bollinger bands, but it's actually a different indicator that's dropped on your chart below price act, below the price action, and it measures the relationship to, between the upper band and the lower band. Percent B is an indicator for measuring the distance between the, Bollin, the Bollinger band. Remember, the distance between those bands is the volatility that's in the market. Appropriately, the indicator is called Bollinger band bandwidth, or just bandwidth indicator. And it's simply the value of the upper band less the value of the lower band. Now, the fact is, percent B works very well with stocks. It doesn't work so good in the Forex market that I have found at all. 
Percent B is an indicator derived from Bollinger Bands and quantifies the securities price relative to the upper and the lower band. So the percent B is actually put on your chart down below. And is it actually the way I look at it, it is a totally separate indicator giving you other pieces of information. But a lot of people mix this up and assume it's all part of Bollinger Bands. So when you're trading with Bollinger Bands and especially the percent B component of the Bollinger Band, you want to be as structured and rule-based as possible. The rules are generally the same for each market, but you need to set the right levels for that market. There are easy ways to get these from the internet or get them directly from Bollinger's Bollinger site, or you can test them yourself. Remember, successful day trading is mostly a game of pennies. The best firms and individual traders who day trade are only looking to trade a couple, make a couple cents per trade or a couple, you know, a tiny little percent per trade. The larger day firms look for simple trading edges. By using Bollinger Bands, we can see that these edges have existed for over a decade. So as you can see, knowing how to exit a Bollinger Band trade is important as knowing how to enter one. By looking at various precise exit points, you're able to see more variations with high edges and historical high probability of trading success. So remember, day trading or successful trading is mostly a game of pennies. So be systematic. There is a preciseness here using Bollinger Bands. Use the preciseness to your advantage. Now, there are hundreds of potential variations. Now, one of the easiest strategies we can use for Bollinger Bands is very simplistic. Because if you understand that trading is more about risk management and money management than it is about complicated strategies. And you understand that all you're looking for in a strategy is to give you a very good entry point and a very good exit point. The rest is all the other things about how you make your determinations, how you enter your order trade, how you enter, you know, set your risk and risk and reward ratios, how you handle your money, how you set your stop losses. Now, the Bollinger Band Squeeze is a straightforward strategy. It's relatively simple to implement. So first, okay, it's very easy. <coughs> Look for an asset or security that with very narrow or, or narrow, narrow, excuse me, or narrowing bands with low bandwidth levels. Ideally, bandwidth should be near the low end of a six month range or if, if you're trading CFDs or Forex, a very low point of range. Okay. Second, wait for a band break to signal the start of a new move. So what we're saying is basically markets get congested. When market gets congested and we have low volatility and prices staying in a fairly congested area, sooner or later, that market is going to break up or break down with creating some new volatility and some breakouts. When you can find the narrow bands and then wait for that breakout, okay, that's going to give you a very simple trade. Trade it in the direction of that breakout, okay, especially if it's broken out above the moving average. <coughs> so it's pretty simplistic. Keep your eyes on the band. Look for a very narrow band okay, with price in a congestion. Look for the breakout, break in this case, break below the moving average and the breakout of the volatility or the creation of new volatility and trade the band in the direction of the breakout. So even though the Bollinger Band squeeze is a straightforward, charters should at least combine this strategy with basic chart analysis confirms signals. For example, a break above resistance can be used to confirm the break above the upper band. Similarly, a break below support 
can be used to confirm a break below the lower band. Unconfirmed bra band breaks are subject to failure. Because the Bollinger Band squeeze, well, let's get my markers off here. The Bollinger Screen does not provide directional clues. Charters must use other aspects of technical analysis to anticipate or confirm the directional break. In addition to basic chart analysis, charters can also apply complementary indicators to look for signs of buying or selling pressure within the consolidation. Momentum oscillators and moving averages are of little value during a consolidation period because these indicators simply flatten along the price action. Instead, charters should consider using volume-based indicators. So what that's basically saying is I use straight volume. When I see the band narrow, I see price consolidating, and I see a break above or below the moving average, and I see a, the price push out of, start riding the upper or lower band, volatility increase. I look at one thing is volume increasing. If I see volume increasing, then I would enter the trade because I use that as a secondary. And especially if I see a break above or below a support or resistance line. So signs of accumulation increase the chances of an upside break while signs of distribution increase a chance of a downside break. So as you can see, the Bollinger Bands are a multifaceted trading indicator that can provide you with lots of information about trends buy and sell balances and potential trend shifts. Together with the moving average in the RSI, Bollinger Bands may make a great foundation for any trading strategy. So on that note, I'm gonna say good night to everybody, but I would again want to suggest to you to go to www.alvexo.com, open a demo account, okay? There's no credit card or deposit required. Use their charts. Use the handout I gave you and try seeing this in real life action, but using demo money and try to see if you can master Bollinger Bands. And if not, use the education provided by Alvexo or contact your customer support care and they'll arrange one-on-one -on -one training with you with one of their financial analysts. So thank you very much and thank you for joining us and good luck using Bollinger Bands. Bye now.